This week, a SparkFun Classic gets its own starter kit, your smartphone helps you debug with the Mushi meter, and we solve a common, frustrating problem with copper tape. This is your Friday New Product Post. The Pico board is a product that we've carried for a long time now here at SparkFun, and it allows you to hook up sensors very quickly and easily to the Scratch graphical programming environment. Up until now, you've only been able to get the Pico board either as a lab pack for a school or by itself. But now we have a starter kit that comes not only with the Pico board, but with a bunch of sensors and hookup wires to get you started. If you know somebody who wants to learn how to program but isn't quite ready for a text-based programming language, using Scratch with the SparkFun Pico board is a great way to get started. This next product is a multimeter, and it has all the same functions that you expect from a modern multimeter. It'll measure voltage, current, and resistance. But it does something unique, which is that it interfaces with your smartphone. The meter itself doesn't have a screen. It doesn't have a big knob to select the function. You simply connect it to your phone over Bluetooth, and then your phone can show you the values that you're reading on the multimeter and log those values. And it comes with these really nice multimeter probes, which also have alligator clip ends that you can connect to them. Take those probes and connect them to the common and the resistant side of the meter, and then short the ends of the probes together. Hold that for a few seconds, and you should see a small LED on the back of the unit light up and start to blink. Now that the Mushi Meter is in pairing mode, open the Mushi Meter app, and you should see a little screen where it says scanning for devices, and you'll see Mushi Meter V1. And once your Mushi Meter is connected, you'll see a readout of the current in DC, the voltage in DC, as well as a few other bits and bobs. Just to test the meter, we can switch over to resistance mode and then touch the two probes together, and it should read zero ohms. The Mushi Meter is nice because it has a smaller footprint than a lot of multimeters, and you can really easily throw it in your toolbox on the go. Also, it allows you to log your readings using your smartphone. So it's really handy for debugging situations where your standard multimeter just wouldn't do the job. Here at SparkFun, we use a lot of copper tape because it's a really nice alternative to jumper wires in e-crafting and paper circuits projects. There is one problem with the copper tape that we've carried for a long time here, and that's the adhesive on the bottom of the tape. Unfortunately, that adhesive wasn't conductive. So if you were to overlap two pieces of copper tape like this, you wouldn't necessarily get a good electrical connection between this piece and this one, which meant you had to do all these little intricate folds anytime you wanted to turn a corner with the copper tape so that you had one continuous piece of copper. With the new tape, however, the adhesive is electrically conductive and allows you to lap two pieces of copper tape together and make a secure electrical connection. To demonstrate what's different about this new copper tape, I've taken a piece of the new copper tape and the old copper tape, and I'm gonna test the resistance by putting one probe on the adhesive side and one probe on the bare copper side. First, we'll take a piece of the old tape, and I'll just strip the end of it here, and put one here and one here. And as you can see, even though I've got it stuck to the probe, it's kind of unevenly, there's a little bit coming through every now and then, but it really isn't conducting. Now if I do the same thing with one of our new pieces of tape, I'll just peel this end off here and stick it to that. And as you can see, it's conducting. A while ago when we started to carry these spring terminals, I built these 101 style electrical kits and they kind of have retro appeal and you probably recognize them if you grew up in the 80s or 90s and went to Radio Shack a lot. Now these are designed so that you can hook up your own circuits using jumper wires and the jumper wires just sort of snug up under the springs. I've replicated this project using copper tape instead of the spring terminals. In this case, I've just taken the copper tape and doubled it over and pushed it down into a slot in the cardboard so that the pressure from the sides of the cardboard pushing in on the copper tape is what makes the connection to the jumper wires. Here you can see I've just put together a simple LED circuit. When I press the button, the LED turns on. 